Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to solve multi-step inequalities. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve multi-step inequalities and represent those solutions on a number line. So go ahead and get your binder, turn to the math section, let's go ahead and take some notes. There are a few key steps to solving multi-step inequalities, the first of which is going to be to distribute if possible. That means if you see a number next to parentheses like here, you're going to want to go ahead and multiply it to each of the terms on the inside of the parentheses. So this would become this. The next step is to go ahead and combine any like terms that you see. Remember, like terms mean same variable, same exponent. So 5x plus 3x we can go ahead and do. That would make 8x. If you saw 15 plus 5, you can go ahead and do that. That makes 20. But you cannot put 8x and 20 together any further because they are not like terms. The first two steps are to simplify our inequality. After we have simplified as much as we possibly can, our goal then is to isolate the variable. We start by undoing any addition or subtraction. So with this example, we would get rid of the plus 20. 20 is our constant. We get rid of a plus 20 with a minus 20. Then we would undo any multiplication or division to remove the coefficient. The coefficient is 8. So we would get rid of a times 8 by dividing by 8. We have to go in that order so we can isolate the variable. The only other thing to consider and remember is that if we multiply or divide by a negative value when we're solving for our inequalities, we have to flip the direction of the inequality sign. That's just one thing you cannot forget to do. So I'm going to go ahead and work out each of these three examples and then give you a problem that looks just like it. So let's go ahead and start by working out number one together. Just like with an equation, my first step is to go ahead and draw my line down the equal sign or the inequality symbol. Now I'm going to look at each side and decide if there's anything I can simplify. So I'm going to look on this side first and think, is there any like terms that you see? You should realize that 4x and negative 2x or minus 2x are like terms. When you combine those like terms, what do you get? You should get 2x. You should also realize that 26 and 11 are like terms. You can combine 26 and 11 to make 37. At this point, there's nothing that changed. I'm just simplifying that side, so I'm going to keep my inequality symbol. And then I can't do anything to that 49, so I just bring it down. So I didn't need to distribute. I combined my like terms. The next step is to undo any addition or subtraction to remove the constant. So what should I get rid of first? I need to get rid of that plus 37 with a minus 37. And if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. Go ahead and simplify. And I get 2x is greater than 12. I need to now get the x by itself. So the last step is going to be to get rid of that times 2. How do I do that? I divide both sides by 2. That leaves me with 1x is greater than 6. Now that I have my solution set, I know that x is any number that's greater than 6. So let's say it's 7. Since x could be 7, I'm going to go ahead and take my original part of the inequality, and I'm going to plug in a 7 in for the x. Then I'm just going to type that in my calculator. When I did that, I got 51. Is 51 greater than 49? Yes. So that's a quick way to check and tell that it satisfies the inequality. To quickly sketch a graph, we're going to go ahead and plot the number 6, and then it's an inequality that is greater than. So we're going to go ahead and put an open circle there on the 6, and it's any number that's greater than 6. So we're going to shade numbers that will be greater than 6. Now it's your turn. You're going to do a problem that looks exactly like that one. So go ahead and get out a piece of lined paper and write this problem on it now. Now go ahead and solve the inequality all by yourself and press play when you're ready to check. You should have ended up with the solution x is less than or equal to 2. How can you check at this point that your solution set is correct? Hopefully you realize that any number that's less than or equal to 2, you could plug back into the original inequality, and that should yield a result that's less than or equal to 26. Quick tip, I would go ahead and plug in 0. 0 is less than 2, and it's the easiest thing to go ahead and plug in, and then you could cross those out and cancel them and just do 14 minus 16. That would be negative 2 is less than 26, which is true. That would be just a quick way to go ahead and check that. Last thing, if we were to graph this, what kind of circle would we use, open or closed? To realize we'd use a closed circle on the 2, and then which way do we shade, to the left or to the right? X is less than 2, so we need to shade to the left. Those numbers are less than 2. Let's go ahead and go back to the other examples, and let me do this one again with you. This is an example of a problem with the distributive property, and I know that because there's a number next to parentheses. Remember, what does the distributive property tell me to do? You should recall that the distributive property has me multiply that negative 2 to each of the terms on the inside of the parentheses. So I have negative 6x plus negative 30 or minus 30. Now what should I go ahead and get rid of first? I need to get rid of the minus 30 or the negative 30. So I need to add 30 to both sides. 
That gives me negative 6x is less than or equal to 72. What do I do now? You should divide both sides by negative 6. Now I have an answer, but I have made two mistakes. Your job is to figure out what are the two mistakes that I have made. Hopefully you realize that I needed to flip the direction of the inequality sign because I divided by negative 6. When you multiply or divide by a negative number in an inequality, you flip the direction of the sign. The other mistake I made is that 72 is a positive number divided by a negative number should give me a negative quotient. Because it's so easy to make those little mistakes, we always want to check our solution. So I'm going to pick a number that is greater than or equal to negative 12. I'm going to pick 0 because 0 is greater than negative 12 and it's an easy number to check with. What would I get if I plugged in 0 back into the original inequality? I would get negative 30 is less than or equal to 42. Is that a true statement? Yeah, it is. So I know I did my inequality correctly. Now to graph, I'm going to go ahead and quickly put a negative 12 on my number line and then decide if I'm using an open circle or a closed circle. It should be closed because it could be equal to that number. And then it's any number that is greater than negative 12. Are those numbers to the right or to the left? should realize those numbers are to the right. So we're going to go ahead and shade to the right. Now it's your turn. So go ahead and take this inequality and write it on a separate sheet of lined paper. Try it all by yourself and press play when you're ready to check. You should end up with x is greater than negative 2. And hopefully you remember to flip the inequality sign because you divided by negative 20. At this point, how could you check that your answer was correct? Hopefully you realize you'd plug in a number that was greater than negative 2. I would pick 0 and I would plug that back into the original equation. That way you could go ahead and quickly figure out 0 plus 1. 1 times 5, 5. And 5 is less than 45. At this point, if we wanted to graph the inequality, what kind of circle would we have to use on the negative 2? Should realize it's an open circle. And then which way do we shade? Right or left? Hopefully you realize we would shade to the right of the negative 2 because we're looking for numbers that are greater than negative 2. All right, let's look at the last example together. Then I'm going to let you do one just like it by yourself. So pay attention and make sure you work this out with me. The first thing I see is that number next to the parentheses. So what should I go ahead and do when I see that 6? You should realize you need to distribute the 6 to each of the terms on the inside. And then I bring everything else down. Now I look for any like terms I can combine. Do we see any? You should realize negative 2x plus 6x makes 4x's. And then with our numbers, negative 48 plus 10 is negative 38. And then bring everything else down. Next, I need to get rid of the minus 38. How do I do that? Should add 38 to both sides. Now I need to get rid of that times 4. How do I do that? Divide both sides by 4. So I get my solution, x is less than 10. I'm going to quickly check this. I'm going to start by picking a number that's less than 10. The easiest number for me is 0. Now I'm going to go back to the original inequality and this part of the inequality, and I'm going to go ahead and put in 0 for the x. After doing that, all I'm left with is 6 times negative 8 plus 10, which makes negative 38. And then that should be less than 2. Is that a true statement? Yeah, so I know I did my math correctly. Now, if I want to graph the inequality, I'm going to go ahead and start by plotting the 10 on the number line and decide if it's an open circle or a closed circle on the 10. Should realize it's an open circle because it's just a less than symbol with no equal sign. Now I need to decide if I'm shading to the left or to the right. Should realize you're shading to the left. Now I'm going to go ahead and have you try this one all by yourself. Go ahead and write this problem on a separate sheet of lined paper. Try it all by yourself and then press play when you're ready to check. You should end up with x is greater than 1.5 or 1.5 is less than x. Either way, that's correct. The two places I think you probably got it messed up on. That's a negative 2 being distributed. So negative 2x and then negative 2 times negative 4 is a positive 8. The other place I could see mistakes is right here. You divided by a negative 2. Since you divided by a negative, you have to flip the direction of the inequality sign. At this point, a quick way to check would also have been to go ahead and put in a 2. 2 is greater than 1.5, so put in a 2 back into the original inequality. If you did that, you would end up with 16 is greater than 15. So you would know that you did your math correctly, since that is a true statement. Last thing, at this point, if we wanted to graph this, what kind of circle would we plot on the 1.5? You should realize it's an open circle because there is no equal sign in that inequality symbol. Which way would we shade? X is any number that's greater than 1.5. So we'd have to shade to the right. Like I said, X could be 2, and a 2 would be on the right of 1.5. All right, last thing about these first three examples before we move on. Letitia says that X equals 9 could be a solution to all the inequalities above. 
Do you agree that none could be in the solution set for all these three inequalities? Explain your thinking. I agree with Letitia. 9 is greater than 6, 9 is greater than negative 12, and 9 is less than 10. Now we've looked at three examples together, and you've looked at three examples by yourself. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and look at 4, 5, and 6 and work all three of them out. The catch is one of them will be worked out incorrectly. Your job is to figure out which of these inequalities was solved incorrectly and why. All right, all three inequalities have been solved, but only one has been solved incorrectly. Your job is to determine which one. So take a moment, pause, and try to figure out which one it is and why. That's pretty tricky, but hopefully you realize number five was incorrect because three-fourths of 12 is nine. The rest of the inequality is solved correctly. I want to draw your attention to two places. One, when we get rid of a times negative three-fourths, we're going to get rid of that by dividing by negative three-fourths. But you'll notice that I didn't divide by three-fourths. I multiplied by the reciprocal. Remember, when we divide fractions, we can go ahead and keep that first number, change the divide to a times, and multiply by the reciprocal. Keep change flip. Then the other thing you want to point out is that since we're dividing by or multiplying by a negative number in our inequality, we did have to flip the direction of the sign. So this is solved correctly from here on out. Everything now is corrected. No more mistakes. Now let's look at an example of when you might see an inequality like this in real life. So we're going to construct the inequality based on the word problem. To begin, I know that he has to pack a suitcase and the contents inside have to be less than 50 pounds. So what inequality would represent that so far? Should be less than 50. Now we want to go ahead and look at what he has already to begin with. We know he has a suitcase and the suitcase weighs 4 pounds. Then we see the word and. What operation is represented by the word and? I know and means plus, and then the contents he wants to pack weighs 49 pounds. Now this is the tricky part. He wants to start packing shirts, and each of the shirts he packs weighs 0.75 or three-fourths of a pound. We want to figure out how many he needs to remove to meet the flight requirements. What operation should we represent with the word remove? Remove means take away or minus, and each shirt is unknown. So we know that each one weighs 0.75, so each is a multiplier. Now we got to go ahead and solve our inequality. I've done the first three steps for you. Go ahead and finish out this inequality. All right, so the answer is x is greater than 4. What does this inequality mean in this context? You should realize that that means that he needs to remove more than 4 shirts, so that way he can meet the requirements for the flight. All right, number eight is going to be your problem. It says Celine and Bennett are solving the inequality below. Celine says you'll need to flip the inequality sign, while Bennett claims you will not need to flip it. Who is correct? Explain your reasoning. What I would suggest is you go ahead and work out this inequality. And if you have to flip the sign, then you would know that Celine is correct. If you did not have to flip the sign, then you would know that Bennett is correct. So go ahead and do that now, and then press play when you're ready to check. All right, based on my work, I know that Bennett is correct. The variable never has a negative coefficient, so we would never have to flip the inequality sign. For the last section today, it says roll a number cube and solve the corresponding inequality for extra practice. You can choose to do that if you have a number cube. If you do not have a dice to roll, you can just pick one or two or three or all of them to do. But go ahead and take a moment to try at least one of these now. And then whenever you press play, the answers will be populated. So take a moment, try them, and then press play when you're ready to check. All right, here are your answers. You can pause if you need to check. All right, guys, that's it. If you made it to the end of this video, I want you to tell me who is your favorite person in our class and why. Today, we learned all about multi-step inequalities. Now, you should be able to solve multi-step inequalities and represent those solutions on a number line. Now, you should go back to the calendar and put any other assignments you have left for the day. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye!